Several things have changed about video action campaigns since our last video about them. So in this video, we want to give you an up-to-date look on where video action campaigns can appear, what changes there have been within the campaign settings, which is going to be the most important part, but also the changes to the types of ads you can create within video action campaigns. So let's dive in. Before we set up a video action campaign in Google Ads, I first want to talk about where your video action ads could appear. First, we see example of TV for the YouTube home feed. Yes, this is available on other devices too, but I'm just going to show you one per option. And probably the most common one will be a YouTube watch page. You're about to watch a YouTube video, but then some ads appear, either before, during the middle, or towards the end of the video. Next is the YouTube watch next feature. You're currently watching a video that we have highlighted right here, but while you're watching the video, there's an ad for a recommended video, typically part of the in-feed video format. Also part of the in-feed format would be the YouTube search results. Since YouTube is the second largest search engine after Google, there are a lot of searches performed on YouTube every day. You can try and capitalize on these searches with an in-feed format. And then we have Google Partners. You've probably seen the blue icon in the upper right-hand corner. You're on a specific website. Sometimes there could be pop-ups. Sometimes it's just built into part of the page. But Video Partners is the final placement. Now I bring this up first for a very important reason. This is probably one of the biggest updates since the last video I did on video action ads. And we're going to see it within the campaign setup when we go to the network settings, but we no longer have control over the placements of our video action campaigns. I can't turn off partners. I can't turn off search results. You have to be okay with the chance of your ads appearing in any of these placements. That being said, let's go into Google ads and start going through an action campaign setup. Within the campaign view, I'm just going to create a campaign. You can also do it from this blue button. And we're going to start completely from scratch here. For video action campaigns, there are three campaign objectives or goals that fall within the video action campaign family. And those are going to be the first three on the top row. You can choose sales, all the e-commerce accounts out there. You can also choose leads, or you can choose website traffic. Just because my mouse is here, I'm going to choose website traffic. And then we get to the next part. And this is why I chose website traffic specifically. To run video action campaigns, you have to have conversion tracking set up. And I'm not going to talk about conversion tracking in this video. It's pretty straightforward. If you're running sales, you're tracking purchases and revenue, most likely you already have that set up. Leads, again, pretty straightforward. You're tracking form fills, phone call actions, most likely you have that set up. But for website traffic, you may not have that set up because you really just focus on driving as many people to your website as possible. That being said, even if traffic is your goal, you still need to have a conversion set up for video action campaigns. Google needs something to optimize towards. So you will want to go back into your goal settings and at least create some sort of traffic based goal conversion that you can add to this particular campaign. This is just a demo video. I don't care which ones are attached. As long as I have some conversions attached, I'm going to click continue. Next, we need a campaign type. Of course, we want video. And since this is Video action, we lost the subtype that used to be there. So nothing else we need to do except click continue. Here's the one part I'm going to mention with video campaigns. Once we get to the end and publish the campaign, you can no longer change these general settings up on top. You're not going to be able to change the goal for whatever reason. If you wanted to change website traffic to leads, you'll have to create a whole new campaign. This is your last chance to finalize the main goal or objective for your video action campaign. Go ahead and name it, choose your location, your language, but now we're getting to the part about bid strategy. They're telling us right on the bottom, these three bid strategies, which are in other YouTube campaigns, are not available for video action campaigns. We only get the four options you see in this menu. So let's just do target CPA to start off. So target CPA, you're trying to stick within a particular cost per acquisition. Similar to that is target ROAS. You're trying to stay within a particular return on ad spend. Maximize conversions, trying to get as many conversions as possible within your budget. This will prioritize using all of your spend. Same thing with maximize conversion value. It'll try to get you as much conversion value within your budget and Google will try to use all of the spend. So choose whatever option is best for you. For now, I'm just going to choose maximize conversions, but a few things to keep in mind with these types of bid strategies with video action campaigns, Google still recommends that you have at least 30 conversions within the past 30 days. I know it might be very tempting if you're a new business or new to Google ads to want as many conversions as possible. And if you're like, yes, I want more leads. I want more sales. I'm going to run a video action campaign but with the bid strategies available. It might not be the best option for you. Look over the other campaign goals and objectives 
or consider creating a campaign without a goal's guidance if you don't already have the historical conversion history within your account. Also, I know I mentioned these two are grayed out. You will have to start off with these two bid strategies anyway, and then later on, you'll be able to upgrade to target ROAS or maximize conversion value. Once you hit the conversion threshold that Google would like, then you'll see the option to switch over and test out those other bid strategies. Next, we will see budget and dates. By default, we see daily. You can enter in your daily budget. Yes, I know, spend more money. But you do see you can set a campaign total. You can see down below, you can send a specific end date, or if you just wanted to have it spend a certain amount and shut off automatically, that's an option. We do have a video about shared libraries. If you want to attach your new video campaign to an existing shared budget, you can do that from here as well. But next is the section I already talked about within the intro, the networks. As you can see, pretty much everything is grayed out. Of course, you have to be on YouTube, but we used to have the ability to turn off YouTube search results or in-feed placements. Well, now it's just all on YouTube. That's pretty much where you want to be anyway. Google TV is an option in many accounts where you can turn on. We do see it in our other accounts, but again, this is our demo account. We have nothing running. This account's always the last to get the additional features. But then also we cannot turn off video partners on the display network. And this is an option I use to turn off always for every single video campaign. Right now, the only campaign objective that allows you to turn this off is creating a campaign without a goals guidance. That campaign objective also gives you more bid strategies to test. So again, if you're new to YouTube ads, that might be the objective you may want to consider starting with to test. So remember all those placements that I talked about in the intro, those are where your ads could appear. But now we get some additional assets. And this one can be important for all of the objectives. While they are optional, you can add site links. If you do decide to include them within your video action campaigns, you need at least two, but Google is recommending four or more. So when I have seen them on my own phone, when I'm watching YouTube, I have seen them stack pretty nice and they can take up a good amount of real estate on the mobile devices. So whatever, I'm just gonna add a few Go ahead and create new ones here. But remember, I said they were mobile only. This would be a time I would potentially consider creating mobile specific site links because there won't be any descriptions and I'd want to keep my headline shorter. After this, look at additional settings. If we click on devices, you still can choose specific devices. I know a lot of people do like to turn off TV screens. They do want to get more actions because it is a lot harder to purchase or fill out a form from a TV screen. I know in the first example I showed you from the YouTube home feed, TV is a placement, QR codes may show up, but that is pretty rare. It's not available on all TV devices and the user has to be logged in to the same account on their phone and the TV while they're watching at the same time. Yes, it's still good for brand awareness. I get that. But if this is a video action campaign, you want more sales, you want more leads, you want more traffic, maybe consider turning TV screens off. It's something that you're going to have to test. Going down a little bit. There we have information about frequency capping. I talk about that in this video right here. If you want to learn how frequency capping differs between YouTube and display, watch this video. There's your ad schedule, any third party measurement, and then possibly look into your video enhancements. We're going to get to the ad creation part pretty soon. I would leave this on if you don't have video ads that satisfy all the placements, particularly talking about vertical video. Doesn't always have to be shorts ads. Vertical video can appear in many other places besides YouTube shorts. If you don't have vertical video, I would leave this setting on. If you have dedicated vertical video, I would uncheck this box. I wish I had a better way to save this, but if you look in this video enhancement section, look how Google can crop your videos. For the most part, they do decent. I wish I could pause it, but look at the couple on the couch. When they zoom into vertical video, a couple gets cut in half. Ew, the guy's missing. So it's just one person where in this original video, there were both. And that's just one example. And I've seen a heck of a lot worse where the cropping and the formatting for Google's enhanced videos look awful within the ad. I've seen important messages completely cut off and you can't read what they're trying to promote. So try to get dedicated vertical video. I understand it's not an option for everybody, but understand how your video ads could appear. And it may not always be the greatest, but we're done with our settings. And here we get into the actual ad group. First, you'll need to choose an audience. If you don't already have an audience saved from a different video campaign, you can go ahead and create a new audience to use. Very similar to how you're creating audiences for your asset groups for Performance Max. There, just named it quick. So I'll choose custom segments clearly. If there's your remarketing data. You can use the targeting options available within YouTube. Add your exclusions, additional demographics, fine. Whatever, I just chose one. You're gonna be very confused when I pick the videos that don't match that targeting whatsoever. But there's my audience targeting. And once I added targeting, Google's gonna automatically turn on optimized targeting. For now, I'm gonna turn it off. You can always add it later. 
Next, scrolling down to advanced settings. This is another big change since the last time I recorded this video. This is another feature where we've lost control. We cannot narrow our targeting anymore by keywords, topics, or placements for video action campaigns. And placements goes beyond the slides I talked about in the beginning of where your ads could appear. So placements, I could potentially handpick which YouTube videos, websites, YouTube channels where I'd want my ads to appear. Lost that ability. Trying to focus on contextual targeting within the YouTube platform, we've lost that especially since we can't turn off the video partners. So it has brought in our targeting since we can't narrow down. And that's why I always turn off optimized targeting because I don't want to go beyond my selected audience if I can't narrow in to exactly what I want to target. Okay, now let's start adding some video ads. Let me pull something here, paste in a video. Just like any video campaign on Google, the video must live on YouTube. You can't upload an MP4 or anything directly to the ad. Add it to your YouTube channel first. Now notice with video action campaigns, the only ad format we get is a responsive video ad. So it's gonna take this one ad and make it work for skippable in-stream, in-feed, and shorts. If you want to run an in-feed only campaign, you're gonna to have to create a campaign without a goals guidance. If you wanna to try to target just shorts as much as possible, look at the more video view focused campaign subtypes. Let me go ahead, enter in the rest of these features, and then we'll walk through the preview here to show you how this single ad could look in multiple formats and placements. Okay, added some information here. We see we're on YouTube, mobile devices. This is an example of my ad on shorts. I understand this is not a video that's suited for an ad whatsoever. It's just what we have to our channel, but these previews can help. So you get an example of where the icons are, where the actual ad overlays are, and what graphics may be cut off within this feature. Here's an example of this vertical video on desktop. Of course, this device is best suited for horizontal video, hence proving that I probably need to add more video creative or more video ads to this campaign. Go to in-feed video, might change it back to mobile because that's how it could appear in feed. Let's look at Google Partners. Here's how one of the pop-up ads could. Again, it looks cut off. We're on a website, there's a video ad, but that's how you can see the preview. But go ahead and name your ad from here. I could choose to duplicate this ad, if I click on it, now let's go edit it. Let's say you wanna keep all the copy the same, you just wanna do video testing. I'm gonna go up here, change the video, and I'm just gonna put one of our horizontal videos. Yes, I know, it's long, it's not an ad, but here if we go to desktop, and I choose something like that, skippable in-stream, which right, that's already what we're looking at. Let's do shorts, so you can see how a horizontal video in a shorts placement does not look great. And even if this video plays and we start talking, I already know with this video, some bad ways that Google can crop it. And with video partners, horizontal just looks better. So I'll say it again, make sure you're adding both vertical and horizontal video options within your campaign. But once your ads are done, go ahead and create. No errors, but if you do have something that Google may not like or may flag, it's gonna capture here. Ours went through, so we can continue to the overview. Now, since I chose a website traffic campaign, there were a couple things missing. If you do choose the objective of sales, you will have the ability to attach product feeds. So products will show up alongside your video ad, try to encourage sales directly from your video campaigns. Apologize. Definitely should have mentioned that in the very beginning. Also, when you were choosing your audience targeting, if you were creating a new audience to use, you could start adding exclusions directly from there. You can also look at your audiences dropdown, look at content. I forgot that they moved it. Let's go up to insights and reports. Start looking to where your ads are shown. It's moved over here where ads showed. When the campaign starts running, you can then start reviewing certain areas to start include specific placements. They will show you YouTube placements as well as any partner placements. Check out performance. When we do launch video action campaigns, we do like to see how website placements are performing because those are gonna come from the video partners. For whatever reason, if they're all garbage or they just don't engage as well, this gives us the idea to go ahead, create a campaign without a goals guidance and run it alongside this one to test which one actually performs better. Another thing to keep in mind is when you go to tools, look at content suitability. This section used to be part of individual campaign setups, but now it's done at the account level. So here's where you can exclude specific types of content, uncheck boxes where you don't want your ads to appear, as well as specific content labels and types. We also see excluded content keywords, as well as placements. I do have a video talking about content suitability. You can watch that one here. But that is our updated walkthrough of a video action campaign. If any other changes come to this campaign format, we'll let you know in a future video or short. But in the meantime, if you have any questions about this setup, please let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, 
give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the Super Thanks button.